Okay, welcome everyone, and thank you for uh, attending this facilitation session. My name is Patrick, and I'll be presenting to you on workplace learning. Um, so before I start, though, I just want to get some introductions from you guys. Uh, so if you all introduce yourself, maybe uh, start with what you do, uh, and a fun little fact about yourself. Uh, so we might start over here. <laughs> Hi guys, my name's Tegan. Um, I am a health promotion officer and I work in obesity treatment and prevention. Um, and something fun about me, um, I'm born on Christmas Day. Oh really? Oh, how's that? <laughs> Not as bad as everyone thinks. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Two presents or one? Two normally. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Over here. Hi, my name's Michael, and uh, I'm a doctor of psychiatry. Um, I, something fun about me, um, I have a passion for tennis, and I'm really frustrated at the lack of progress with my backhand. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get out there a few times a week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. good. Well, thank, thank you for that. Thank you. Hi, right, you over here? Yes, well my name's Jane and I'm a mother of three boys and I work in admin, um, a place called Microcare, and uh, only three days a week. And um, fun fact about me is um, I'm riding to the tennis too and I'm aiming to beat Michael across the who who's sitting across the table. Oh great. Right. Yes. <laughs> Just hit to his back end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. My name's Anna and I'm a primary school teacher. Fun fact about me is that you'll often see me dancing on tables in the classroom and singing. Oh, right. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds really fun. Thanks, Kids Anna. Think so. Okay, so now obviously we all work, uh, we're all uh, busy, busy with our jobs. Um, do any of us know what workplace learning might be? Or experience it all? No? Uh, yeah, at work. <laughs> yeah, at work, yeah, sure. So, have any of you been sort of upskilled at work or anything, or been taught how to do things extra whilst being on the job? Yeah, I, um, I suppose I'm exposed to workplace learning every day. Um, part of my role is not just classroom teacher, I'm also the RCT leader, and um, I have regular learning sessions with a technician to upskill me in the behind the scenes of. All of things ICT. Fantastic. Do you also get a lot of benefit out of that? Oh yeah, I do. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of knowledge and a lot of skills. Yeah. Great, thanks. Anyone else? Actually, our, our work, I suppose a bit of workplace learning is uh, we have uh, first aid and CPR. So um, we're free to go to those um, sessions if we want to. Oh, great. Yeah. And also we often have, um, if we want to attend a uh, computer, Updates. Sure. We can go along there and a bit of Excel learning and uh, what have you. Yeah. Great. So nice. we have opportunities to do that. Very yeah. good. Nice. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, so companies uh, are becoming more and more concerned uh, about man maintaining and developing the skills and knowledge of their staff. Uh, so, therefore, in addition to the initial training that takes place at the start of every occupation, it is becoming more and more common for companies <laughs> to continue the development and training of their staff. As work standards, occupational requirements and market trends continuously change over time, it's imperative that the staff is kept up to date. Um, and the beauty of workplace learning is that it provides further development of staff within a rich and relevant context. Um, so uh, learning within the workplace gives the learners the ability to make sense of the material by applying it directly to their role. Uh, by doing this, it helps the learner understand more the foundation of what they are learning and why they are learning it. Uh, a famous theorist, theorist uh, Vygotsky, developed the theory of constructivism, uh, which is based around learning as an active, contextualised process of constructing knowledge rather than acquiring it. And that knowledge is constructed based on personal experiences and hypotheses of the environment. So pretty much what it is, is obviously learning on the job. Um, you'll be learning material that's relevant to your work. So once you've learned it, you'll go out into your job and then you'll continue working on that material you've learned. So you're not just going to Forget it, you'll use it and keep using it. So that's the benefit of workplace learning. Mm. It's upskilling, as you said before, Jane. Um, so now, can any of you think of what possible advantages of workplace learning may be? And if I can have a volunteer to write them up on the board, if we, someone can, uh, if you 
Otherwise, you yell them out and the advantages of workplace learning. Would you like me to? Yeah, great. Thanks, Tegan. I can start you guys off if you like. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. think of any. Yeah. Um, the advantages on one side. Uh, I can think of one advantage. Yeah. Uh, that is the immediate application of uh, knowledge that has been imparted. So I would say the immediate application. How about um, keeping up to date? Which, sorry, just to finish off, which, which results in reinforcement of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Which reinforces mm -hmm. reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Emma. Thanks, Mark. Exactly. Reinforcement is very important as well, obviously, because the old saying, you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. Use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. um, is ever more so true in workplace learning. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can learn something, you go straight on the floor and, and put it into practice, then it, it means a lot. I think um, in our society today, uh, technology is coming along a lot quite quickly, and if you don't, especially in my industry, if you don't um, engage in workplace learning, you become behind the eight ball. So Definitely. you are kept, the, an advantage would be that you are um, kept up to date with current practices, current technologies, mm. and um, yeah, what's relevant to that definitely to the current day, I guess. For sure. Yeah, kept up to date. That's it. Also, uh, it will make work the workplace interesting. So, once again, following from what Anna said, keeping people up to date, yep. that it makes you feel like um, you know what you're doing, um, yes. and uh, learning with uh, colleagues. Um, is always very uh, positive. This will help with the interaction with colleagues mm -hmm. and engagement again. Mm. Um, the morale, I guess. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. It could be a morale booster. Yeah. Yes. And it's also a self esteem booster. Like I know yes. the more knowledge I acquire every day, um, particularly with my IT role, which I find quite difficult, the more knowledge I acquire, the better I feel about myself in that role. Mm -hmm. mm. It gives you confidence. Mm. So sure. confidence. Yeah. That's right, Jane. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we might be like confidence down there. Mm. Um, I think those last, those last few as well. Um, if we have all them together, it gives you a bit of motivation uh, mm. to keep working as well, rather than just going to work every day doing the same thing, knowing exactly what you're doing. Mm. If you learn something new, um, you're, you're excited about about your, your work. Mm. Um, and, and it's also yeah. um, it challenges you. Challenges you. Exactly. Yes. Learning challenges yeah. you. For sure. Yeah. Great. It's I'll like the that. saying, change is as good as a holiday. Yes. You know, if you keep doing the same thing, you get quite stagnant and sure. boring. Yeah. You know? That's it. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Fantastic. Well, we've got the advantages covered. So, mm. can we think of any challenges uh, of workplace learning? Anything that could stop people from wanting to learn in the workplace? Not, not feeling that yep. they're not confident enough in themselves, that they're maybe not up to the ticket. Yeah, sure, level. so a bit of fear of mm. failure type mm. thing. Yeah, yeah, fear of failure, yeah. yeah. Mm. Right. A huge um, challenge we experience here in education and at schools is um, we have quite, some quite accomplished teachers that have been doing it for years mm. that have the view, well it's worked one way for so long, mm. why change it? So I suppose the, the challenge is to shift that um, that resistance to yes. change, that resistance to learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Seems, that is a challenge. Yeah. Um, people often can say too that they're time poor. Sure. So the yeah. extra learning maybe add an extra burden to them. Yes. Because yeah. they're uh, it's eating into their time at work. Um, and uh, yeah once again creating more of a challenge for them, trying to time manage. Mm. Yep, correct. Um, have you got any team, I think? Um, I think the time for one would be a big one for lots of people. Definitely. Trying to make time to fit in all the extra stuff on top of what you're already doing. Yes. Yeah. Um, sure, yeah. Could funding be a challenge? So yeah. when you're looking at workplace learning, mm. sometimes that might require in-house, sure. which is easily to achieve yes. funds wise but if you're needing um, to expose people to something that requires an expert yes. that requires 
financial definitely so that's what they're finding their, their funds so that's what they're funds, yeah. mm. i think that's a big one as well there's lack mm. of expertise in your company yeah. mm. and there's no one to actually train there's mm. um, it might be hard to get the motivation to go out and seek that extra mm. training for mm. the employees mm. fantastic and kind of just reinforcing what um, anna and jane uh, and peter have said um, a challenge would be to maintain priority of work. Mm. Um, it is a workplace after all, and, and not right. a school. Yes. So jobs do, do need to be completed. Yes. Mm. And while there are many advantages, mm. the challenge would be to get the balance right mm. so that tasks are actually completed That's and right. people are not focusing on. The education that's side. A, that's a big one. That's a very big one. Is it? We actually uh, experienced that uh, in our company. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we've got a contact centre, so we uh, there's always programs running to upskill bankers. So, for instance, bankers will start new to the bank. Um, they'll start on the phone. They'll be trained in two areas: of the servicing, just servicing uh, customers, and um, servicing customers for cards as well. Um, so. We have a big thing where we need a certain amount of people on the phones to receive phone calls to help uh, help um, the customers. Mm -hmm. um, so we can't have too many people off the phone to be trained. So that's a big thing we need to look after. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes a barrier because that we face uh, to stop us from training people is because we need to be conscious of who's on the phone, mm -hmm. who's looking after the customers. Um, yeah. But then also we need to keep up to date, uh, yeah. as we said earlier. Yeah. And um, similarly to that, it's um, you know if you're going to spend uh, quite a chunk of time at, at a school educating, uh, you know, educating teachers. Who's replacing mm. those children? Where do you yes. get the money to? Mm. You need experts for to um, for the learning for the teachers. You also need funds to pay for the uh -huh. to look after the kids. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, So now we've got some, some challenges there. So how do you think we'd approach uh, these challenges? How could we overcome them? Do you think? Um, could it be the work of someone in the company or um, the, the development of something or a program of some sort? Um, you, you need something to come in that would show the, um, the benefit of, of all that this yes. workplace yeah. learning. That, um, yeah, you need to um, be able to display to your uh, workers, your employees, that um, there is a big benefit to workplace learning. Yes, so, definitely. Um, mm. So you need someone to come in and maybe address the uh, fear of failure or the lack of confidence to go and upskill. Mm. Um, talk to the group about the resistance to change, how it would be better for them if they if they learn. Um, time poor, well that's that can be easily addressed. You can say we'll give you the time, the, the enough time to go through it and learn it. Um, funds that all comes down to. The business, the company in itself, um, putting in the effort obviously for the long term. They can't just focus. They need to look at the future. So uh, you know, they might go through a hard patch in the meantime. Um, mm. As well as the, the work and learning balance, um, there might be a bit of a struggle there in the early stages. Uh, but in the future, if you get the training right, uh, you'll uh, it'll be it'll be better off in the future. The company will be better off. Yeah. Um, so yeah. maybe so maybe yeah. The implementation from maybe a certain person or a group of people who come through and help, and help with the uh, with the upskill. I think the most important thing about those um, addressing those challenges is that if the workplace learning is relevant, um, you know, it, that's really important. It's practical. It's not mm. entirely theoretical. Mm. It's definitely yeah. practical. Yes, and definitely. Relevant. Yeah, hands-on type. Work. Yeah, and it will you know decrease that fear of failure. Also, a collaborative approach will decrease the fear of failure and will um, promote confidence amongst the staff yep. as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. So, what a lot of workplaces uh, do in their human, human resources department is they make use of a, uh, of a supervisor. Um, so, the role of the supervisor is to um, is to come in and have an in-depth part in the designing, planning, and administering of the workplace learning. Um, and they to identify uh, what the learning objectives are required for the company. Um, so there are five abilities in which a supervisor needs to have in order, in order to facilitate workplace learning successfully. Um, and these are managerial competencies to oversee the design and requirements of the learning program, 
Um, they need to be able to formulate learning objectives correctly. They need to design learning experiences appropriately. They need to conduct the learning experiences correctly. And they need to conduct evaluations of learning. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's just something one of the learning supervisors uh, can do. Yeah. Um, so now supervisors need to examine the needs of the learners and in collaboration with the learner, decide what method of learning is best suited, whether it be visual, auditory or kinesthetic. So can anyone tell me how a supervisor might identify the best way to teach uh, the learning material, how to best sort of approach it for each individual? So before you go into a class, is there anything you might want to do for the individuals to see how they might best understand the material and get the best out of it? I don't know, maybe give them some handouts beforehand yeah. that they can read over so that they've got an idea of what they're, what they're going to be doing, what yeah. they're going to be learning. Sure. So you get a bit of an overview, yeah, generally an overview. Get a bit of information. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that at least they're armed with, um, they're walking in, you know, not sort of walking in blind. Mm. They don't know what they're doing. Yes, mm. definitely. Mm. Yeah, so what, uh, yeah, did you have something like that? Oh, um, uh, well, perhaps just, just in uh, an interview with uh, each individual employee to ask them um, how they remember um, learning something that sure. was important to them and yes. how, how they, how they, um, how they were at their best when they learnt a particular thing in life. Sure. Yeah. Was it as a result of you know, reading a book? Yes. Was it as a result of uh, hearing uh, a lecturer talk about something? Mm -hmm. Or or was it actually you know, hands-on, as you said, kinesthetic um, experience, yes. physical experience? Exactly. So I, I imagine interviewing your employees before the learning project happens, yep. you get a pretty fair idea as to who gets into the, the auditory, visual, kinesthetic category yeah, that's um, right. yep. by going back to their own personal experience yes. um, uh, in terms of uh, what stuck and how yeah. how it came. No, exactly right. So um, one way as well as going back to experiences is they actually can conduct a learning test um, to find out exactly what type of learning they are. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll just quickly, we might quickly do a learning test yeah. to find out what you guys, uh, mm -hmm. what you guys are. If you're, if you're a, um, a visual, auditory, or kinesthetic learner. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got ten questions here. Um, now, so ten questions each have three, three answers each. So um, A, B, and C. Um, so if you just mark down on your on your paper there um, a response to each question, either A, B. C or D, and so and we'll tally up how many you have of each at the end. Um, so when operating new equipment for the first time, I prefer to, is it A, read the instructions, B, listen or ask for an explanation, C, have a go and learn by trial and error. Okay, now question two, when seeking travel directions, I, A, look at a map, B, ask for spoken directions. C, follow my nose or maybe use a compass. Sorry, can you repeat those? Sure, so A, look at a map. B, ask for spoken directions. Or C, follow my nose or maybe use a compass. Thank you. Yeah. Question three, when cooking a new dish, I, A, follow a recipe. B, call a friend for an exclamation. C, follow my instinct, tasting as I cook. Okay, question four. To teach something, I write instructions. B, explain verbally. C, demonstrate and let them have a go. Question five. I tend to say, A, I see what you mean. B, I hear what you're saying. C, I know how you feel. Oh. Tough one. I can repeat that if you like. Yeah. I tend to say, A, I see what you mean. B, I hear what you're saying. C, I know how you feel. Can you have two? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, question seven. Uh, six. 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 Sorry, six. question six. I tend to say, A, show me. B, tell me. C, let me try. Uh, 
tough one. Okay, question seven. I tend to say, A, watch how I do it. B, listen to me explain. Or C, you have a go. Question eight. Complaining, complaining about faulty goods, I tend to A, write a letter, B, phone, C, go back to the store, or send a faulty item to the head office. Okay, question nine. I prefer leisure activities. A, museums or galleries. B, music or conversation. C, physical activities or making things. And final question. When shopping, I, tre I generally tend to A, look and decide. B, discuss with shop staff. Or C, try on, handle or test. So if you just want to quickly count uh, how many you have of or the most, or just just tell it which uh, which letter you have the most of. Can can you just say question A? Yes. Uh, question one. Yeah, sorry. Question one. Yes. What were those again? Like the A, B, and C. So. Uh, so when operating new equipment for the first time, mm -hmm. I prefer to A read the instructions, B, listen to or ask okay. for an explanation. Yeah, it's all right, that's all right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, who had a majority of A's? Michael and Jane. Okay, so you guys are visual learners. You tend to learn through seeing. You think in pictures and you need to create vivid mental images to retain information. I personally am that way as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Okay, who had majority of B's? Tegan. I'm not sure about this. Okay, so you are an auditory learner. So you tend to learn through listening. Uh, you have highly developed auditory skills and are generally good at speaking and presenting. Mm -hmm. And learn best through verbal lectures, discussions, talking things through and listening to what others have to say. Cool, definitely. Okay, now who had the uh, majority of C? <laughs> that would be Anna. Okay, so you're a kinesthetic learner. You tend to learn through moving, doing, and touching. Uh, remember and process information through interacting with the space around you, and you find it hard to sit still for long periods of time. <laughs> Maybe distracted true. by the need for activities. Okay, so that's just a way you can get to understand how people yeah, can learn. Might learning. explain why I dance on the tables in the classroom. Yeah. Could be, yes. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You're more sure with the, these kids' brains. Yeah. Well, we dance, but all we dance on tables. No, yeah. 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 exactly. um, so yeah, so that's just some way a company can go about um, how they should best teach their staff, maybe mm. group yeah. uh, different that's categories. So yeah. um, okay. we, we learn about the brain, and you know, at um, the beginning of the year, in some classes, particularly the older grades, they go through this to learn about. It's the best way that they learn to help them. Okay, oh, fantastic. Interesting. Great. Um, now, in order to manage workplace learning effectively, there are five key tasks the supervisor needs to undertake. Uh, now, up here, I have five chocolates. You probably all have been wondering for a while now what these are. Um, so I want each of you to pick um, a chocolate each. Pick your favourite one. Ooh. Um, there's got to be a bit of an agreement here, so you can't, come, <laughs> can't fight over one. You can't have all five. You can't have all five. <laughs> yeah. Go see you back straight yeah. yeah. Okay. I saw you going into that. That was a plate for the morning. I knew you had the turkey. Okay, yeah. so I'll take the boost. Uh -huh. um, Alrighty. So, attached to each chocolate is one of the five tasks that a learning supervisor must undertake in their role. Depending on which chocolate you pick will show which task you are best suited to. Now this is, uh, this is actually, um, this is guaranteed, they've done uh, psychology tests on it and the p-value is significant. So, uh, what, what word you've got is what best you'd be suited to as a learning supervisor. Um, no, I'm not joking. With chocolate. So, it's chocolate. Yep, with chocolate. Whoa. Uh, just, just kidding. But anyway, for the gun. <laughs> um, so, who has um, 
Who has the Turkish Delight? Mm. I do. Michael, mm. you got Turkish Delight. So, yes. uh, Turkish Delight, you're, actually, you're a delight yourself in the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> um, many, many would argue with yeah. that. So, uh, when, what word do you have there with it? Is it monitor? Monitor? Yeah, monitor. so you're someone who uh, continually monitors the engagement, knowledge, and motivation levels of staff, as well as keeping up to date with the internal and external environment uh, of the organization. So, that's what you'd be best suited to within the five stages. Yeah. 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 Uh, who picked up the Moro? I did, yes. Okay, the Moro, you're a different one. <laughs> uh, you, like the you like to challenge the norm. We're not too sure what the Moros are about. Um, so, but, so you provide staff with a range of new, improved and challenging uh, learning op uh, opportunities. Uh, so who's got the Cabby Dream? Me. Anna? Okay, so you're a dream boat, actually. Correct. Correct. Everyone loves you in the workplace. Uh, you, you tend to take problems away. What does Anna say? Uh -huh. remove. So, remove. 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 Yep. So yeah. you remove the barriers to learning. Uh, very good. Yes. Yeah. So Excellent. everyone likes that. Yeah, very good. Um, and what else have we got? So Tegan, you've got the flake. Yes. Okay. So quite the contrary to your name, uh, you are actually extremely supportive. Oh, yeah. Um, and so you provide coaches and ment you provide coaches and mentors to support learning in the workplace. So well done. And finally, we've got the uh, the boost. So the boost, uh, people need me as the boost. Uh, I give everyone that, that pick me up when it is uh, required most. Um, so I encourage and motivate employees to learn, develop within the company. Um, so mine is motivate. So I motivate people. Excellent. Yeah. So they're the five uh, the five areas that you need. As a uh, as a workplace in the workplace learning, uh, just a fun way to sort of to learn the areas. Mm. Okay, now finally, oh, that <laughs> and, <laughs> you and you can have to hand the chocolates back at the end oh. <laughs> for the next class. Um, okay, so finally, uh, I'll just run through the process of managing workplace learning. There are nine elements. Um, so actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll get tea actually, or any other volunteers, things right up. Ah, uh, uh, who volunteer? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, you rub it off. Fantastic, we can rub that off. There's some um, paper under those questions. Oh, yep. Can I eat my tea still like that? Yeah, you can go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have time. Yeah, keep the class interested. Mm. Sure. So, yeah, so we've got the nine elements of managing workplace learning. Uh, so we'll start with uh, performance appraisal. Yep. So performance appraisal um, is developing an action plan for further targeted learning. That's the first step. So that's finding out what needs to be done, what needs to be learned within the business. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, we've got the learning episode, um, which is the design of the learning program and decisions whether the learning will take place on site or off site. Number three, we've got the transfer of learning. So this ensures that the skills and knowledge learned within training are used within their current day-to-day -day roles as to retain information. Number four, we've got extended learning. So this is the gradual accomplishment of undertaking simple tasks to more complex tasks with the new acquired information. Number five, complex but clear learning outcomes. Mm provides the learners with a specific goal to help shape and modify their behaviours. Okay. Number six, we are at direct guidance of experts. So to guard against the development of bad habits and assisting where appropriate, the learners develop mental progression. Number seven, indirect guidance of experts. And this is where the learners are more competent but maintain a lower level of support and guidance. Diminishing, and the final stage is diminishing of support. So the learner is encouraged to become more independent and confident to take on tasks of their own. 
Yeah. So we've got performance appraisal learning episode, transfer of learning, extended learning, complex of clear learning outcomes, direct guidance of experts, indirect guidance of experts, diminishing of support. And the ninth element we've got is creating new knowledge. New knowledge. It all makes sense. Yeah. Mm. And so that's obviously going out into your, into your role. Um, you're confident with everything you've learnt, um, and then you grow in on that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Very good. All right. Thanks, Anna. Okay. Great. All right. So that wraps up um, everything on workplace learning. Uh, we might just have a wrap up of what we learned uh, tonight. Um, so uh, we went through what is workplace learning. Um, you know, we know that it's uh, the in-house learning, the up, up, keeping up to date uh, with work processes. Um, we've learned what the advantages and challenges of workplace learning are. Uh, we went through what the types of learning styles there are and how people can benefit from, benefit from them. Um, we learned how to manage workplace learning, so that's to monitor, challenge, remove, support and motivate. And finally we learned the process of managing workplace learning. Um, so that's everything for tonight. Uh, do any of you have any questions you'd like to ask? I'd like to make a comment. Yeah, sure. um, going through this process with you tonight, yeah. um, it actually puts in perspective the learning that I, I go through at work. So I can see now the, the stages that they take us through and particularly the outside companies that come in Yes. and take us through all this, so it's been really interesting. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. well, fantastic. Yes, and it's got a, yes, yes. I, I'm saying, Anna, recommend Make the connection realize, there. Yeah, yeah, it actually makes you think about more of why, yeah, what, what they do at work and why they're doing yeah. it. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's sure. actually been interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you might think at the time, mm. oh, why do I have to go through this? Mm. Why do I have to do work? I already know what I'm doing. Yeah. But uh, it's all for the future of the company mm. and for your own development yourself. Um, and just keep you motivated and everything, mm. um, keep you switched on. Um, there's plenty of, plenty of benefits there and reasons as to why they do it. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And also, just the way you presented it tonight mm. makes me realise, because I've sat through a lot of lectures, that you can make it interesting. Yes. You can make it fun, yeah. you can yeah. make it interesting. Yeah. It all, yeah. Often it depends on who's mm. presenting mm -hmm. as to whether you're really interested or not, and whether you stay focused and interest, interested in what you've done tonight. Yep. Made it a bit more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. spot on, Jane. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, the um, the tutorial, we call it that tonight, has been broken down into five sections, and because you went from um, one section to the next section, and each section was different yes. in the way that you uh, approached it, um, which meant that it was easier to maintain. You know, for someone as old as me. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't have the attention span that he once did? Uh, it made it easier to to um, maintain my attention because um, you didn't go on with the same kind of yep. um, lecture style for thirty to forty minutes. You you shifted from one style of um, getting a message to your boss or to 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 the next to the next, yep. and it, you know I, I kept finding myself sort of. Like, you know, increasing my alertness exactly. to what you're talking about. Sure. So uh, that, that was very good. And the other thing that was uh, very good was um, um, how uh, the, 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 the learning stages really do apply in the work that I do individually with, with patients. Mm. Um, you know, people come in and they're confused about how they're doing things and why they're continuing to get into difficulty. And we do a performance appraisal, mm -hmm. I've never called it that, but that's what yes. happens, yes. and then gradually move through those stages until eventually um, there's a diminishing of support because I'm confident that the individual has, has learned through experience by applying the lessons, if you like, yes. and they are now able to, to go on out without my support yes and that's that's what so a good sorts of work yeah. mentor and teacher and therapist is about isn't it yeah sort exactly of, you know, assisting someone go from a position of um, um, needing appraisal and information mm -hmm. to a to a position where 
they're confident that they've got this knowledge now and they can go out and, mm. and use it because they've tried it and it's worked and exactly. Like exactly. I say, that's the benefit of, uh, of the in-house learning is yeah. use it straight away. Yeah. And it's all in context as well. So everything right. you learn is yeah, it makes sense to you. So yeah. um, that's the importance of it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank, thank you. No worries. All right. Well, thank you all for coming yeah, and um, being involved. So involved as well. You're a great group. Yeah. Um, and you hope you uh, yeah, got a lot out of it. Yes, I do, dear. Right. I do really do. Yeah, yeah. Do you need to fill out something? Oh, and sorry, just one last thing. I've got these um, evaluation forms. Oh, okay. Um, yes. So I've always had evaluation forms. Please back to me. Mm -hmm. so that would be great. Thank you. 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 Thank